Welcome everybody to the Channel Vision Magazine webinar featuring NHC, the communications stack provider, which is going to show us how we can turn copper pots into pots of gold. I'm your moderator, Bruce Christian, Senior Editor at Channel Vision Magazine. Our presenters today are NHC's co-founder and Vice President of Marketing and Business Development, Glenn Nelson, and Vice President of Sales, Eric Hammer. Welcome to you both. With that said, let me turn it over to Glenn Nelson. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, today we're going to talk about a few things. We, we're going to talk a little bit about NHC and, and uh, selling the stack. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the, the, the evolution of POTS. And this whole webinar kind of came from some of the field work that uh, Eric and I have been doing. We are out in the West Coast and customer came up to us and said, I got any locations. What is happening to my POTS lines? Are they going away? Do I need to make plans? And so we've been hearing this from some from both customers and also partners. And we thought this would really, really be a great opportunity to give you our view of what is gonna be happening uh, with POTS in the future. I will say this, POTS applications are here to stay. Now, whether you know it's, it's traditional POTS or some variations that we'll be talking about uh, this afternoon, uh, POTS type applications are definitely here to stay. So we're gonna talk a little bit, little bit about that. We're gonna talk about the fate of POTS by the LEC, by the local exchange carrier. We'll talk about now the modern alternatives to POTS. And then I'll turn it over to Eric, and Eric will talk about um, pot solutions. He'll talk about the uh, each one's the pros and cons of each one of those solutions, and then he'll talk about the uh, pricing examples for each solution, and then we'll have a Q and A session. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about NHC. We have to have our little commercial in here. So this is our 20th year. We're very proud of that, and uh, we've got a nice new badge down below here. You see for celebrating our our, our 20th anniversary. We're headquartered in, in Concord, Mass. We have a network operations center in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, we also have uh, a, a facility in Rochester, New York for uh, operations and engineering. And then we have service delivery uh, teams nationwide. We have IT people nationwide. We have uh, ops folks nationwide. We also have a channel management team that covers uh, the nation. So we're, we're now very well represented for, from coast to coast. And we are a full service provider uh, in US and in Canada. This is our second year of offering uh, full services in Canada. So one of the things that came up in a conversation uh, that I had uh, with a large partner of ours uh, out, in the, out in the West Coast a few weeks back was, uh, he said, well, you guys are just great. You're, you're probably the, the greatest aggregator that we work with. And I, I said, well, thank you very much. And I came back and I said, well, you know, we're so much more than an aggregator. So I thought, well, this is something I'd like to bring across to our partners that are joining us today. Uh, yes, you know, we buy from many carriers and many network service providers on a wholesale basis to kind of maximize our network options and coverage. It's a very big part of our business and we're extremely good at it. We have about uh, 200 uh, different types of carriers and vendors that we work with uh, on the access level. We also buy sophisticated network components like SD-WAN, and we incorporate them into our managed service solutions. Uh, we are one of VMware, for example,'s fastest growing customers. So yes, we do basic network access. It's a big part of our stack, which we'll talk about in a moment. But we also do a lot of uh, mix and match with managed services componentry that, uh, for instance, like VMware. Uh, we also own our own uh, Metaswitch network. So this is something that we own, we manage it, we, we have developed it for the last uh, seven or eight years. We actually, we have all the engineering people in house to be able to manage that. So when you look at that, we are certainly more than an aggregator and we're also more than just an, a, a managed service provider by itself. Okay, so it's really the key to our success that we see is blending uh, the best of aggregation uh, of network equipment, of CPE managed services, of, of customer service, of account management. We wrap that all around, you know, exceptional NHC uh, uh, team that we, we leverage our, our, the great talent of our NHC team to produce the best overall customer and partner experience. So one of the things that we think, one of the lines we're kind of sort of uh, really feel proud of is that we obsess about the partner and customer experience. So let's take a little, little look at the partner benefits. 
first of all, we're a hundred percent partner driven. We have been for our entire 20 year history. We have no minimums, which sometimes some of our competitors who partners work with have. We're very, we're very flexible in our contract. We have a flat, flat organization. It's very easy uh, for us to work out specialized arrangements for our partner community. Uh, wholesale versus resale. Um, one of the things that I think are a lot of our partners who may also be agents for some of the, of the big carriers that are out there is in your agent experience, uh, you know that they will limit access to certain verticals or certain companies where you're not allowed to sell to. On a wholesale basis, we can sell to anybody. There are no restrictions uh, to us, which we really, uh, we definitely leverage in our industry against uh, partners who are also agents, just one, one specific carrier. We also co-manage our solutions. Um, we go hand in hand. If our partner has the experience and the knowledge uh, to provide MSP functionality or project management functionality, we're with you all the way. You know, we get everything done that we're supposed to do. We work, we leverage your skills and together we produce a very positive outcome for the customer. We also have very strong compensation and incentive programs for the full range of services. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in terms of what we offer for the uh, stack. We have the lowest churn in our industry. That means that customers stay with us forever. They don't uh, leave us to someone else. And what that provides is, first of all, a lot of stability for the customer. Uh, and also, though, for you folks in, in the partner community, uh, that, that revenue stream that has never broken, uh, a very good thing. And we like to say to our partners, above, above everything else, we help you get to yes faster with your customer. We give you the tools, we give you the pricing, we give you the solutions, and we wrap that around the great customer service that we provide to get you to yes faster with the customer. And of course, we have these stack solutions, which we'll be talking about in a moment uh, throughout all of North America. The customer benefits by the stability that NHC offers. We are debt free, we're profitable. Uh, we're run by a successful uh, team of folks that have decades of working together in telecommunications. Customers appreciate that kind of stability uh, given all of the changes that's happened in our industry over the last five years. We're a certified telephone company in 50 states, uh, plus in 10 provinces in Canada. We have to meet certain financial uh, criteria and we have to provide a lot of information uh, to both Canada and the US as to how we operate. And that's a big differentiator over some other folks that are just offering, for, in for instance, one or two types of products that you might sell and don't have that kind of certification. We also are, are very proud of the fact that we have seven by 24 by 365 stateside support by NHC employees, not overseas or not jobbed out to someone else. Um, we also have these great command portals that provide everything from tracking inventory to billing information to network management tools, all in a single pane of glass. That's both for our customers and also for our, our partners. Our partners can see all the activity for their customers, which we think is also a, a very good thing for being a partner of NHC. And then we have project management experts. Um, as our services got more and more sophisticated over the last, say, 10 years, we started to add a function of a very skilled project manager who would be responsible for everything once the order is, is logged into our company <clears throat> to when the, the customer gets their service and, and when the customer approves that service. And these folks really do a great job <clears throat> of working with both the customer's vendor, the customers, and all within NHC and all the NHC resources. And then we also are very, very, uh, we also believe that communication is very important. Uh, communications to you, our partners, as well as to the customer. And this is done by <clears throat> sending out email milestones, by, by communicating with the customer via email, and by communicating by the customer with a steady flow of phone calls and information about what's happening with their order. And then lastly, we have the stack solutions. And let's talk a little bit about the stack solutions. So we took a sort of a page out of the OSI seven layer model of, of how com, uh, computers communicate. And we made our own model based upon being a communication service provider. And it's really three levels. The first one is connectivity to everywhere. This is our network level. And it's uh, the relationships we have with all of our carrier partners. It is sort of that aggregation side of our business. 
Uh, we're very proud of what we've done there. We've been doing it for 20 years and we have a lot of experience. And that covers all the services that you could see from legacy voice all the way up through to fiber services and wireless services. Uh, anything that is a network side of the house, uh, we have it uh, in all of North America. And then we have uh, the next layer are the things that we manage and control. And that's our overlay. That's all of our cloud services, our UCAS and collaboration, our VoIP services, our, uh, you know, the, 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 the contact center, the SD-WAN, the firewall, all of these things are overlay uh, to an internet type customer and are above the network. So uh, again, we're very proud of the services we offer for that. And then the top layer is the managed services. So these are things that we are able to do on behalf of the customer. For instance, using our MetaSwitch, we're able to manage for them all the UCAS functionality that they would require. We also have managed firewall services and managed security. Uh, of, the, of which those two will be developed even further, uh, you know, throughout this year. So we're very proud of those three of those three levels. It pretty much sums up everything that NHC does, backed by all the things I just talked about in terms of the great customer service, the great support, uh, and, and delivery of those services. So let's talk a little bit about POTS lines. <clears throat> so if we look at the POTS lines from say ten years ago. Everything was traditional LEC. Uh, there was about 80 million POTS lines across the country that were used for commercial purposes. Um, small number of CLEX uh, started offering POTS lines based upon UNI-L loops. So this is a case where they would co-locate with the LEC in their CO, and then they would buy loops uh, based upon the UNI uh, 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 tariffs, and they would be able to offer POTS lines very similar to the LECs, except for a much cheaper price. Cable providers, providers also started to offer POTS lines linked in with their residential cable service. There was a ground start and loop start uh, services were available, POTS lines available from the LEC. The difference there being uh, that, you know, if you have a, a loop start service that is powered by the CO. So that has all of that battery backup built in because the line is right there for that. And then the, uh, the ground starts are used in, in accordance with a, uh, some sort of CPE device the customer may have. The applications for the POTS lines in those days were focused on small office uh, type of voice lines, fax, burglar alarm, measurement and control systems, pretty much the same things that POTS had always been used for. And also universal POTS service was a requirement by the FCC. It was, it was uh, part of what we pay into in terms of our universal service fund. Growth was steady and rates could have sort of gradually increased. Now, now go five years after that and you're into a different world. 30 million LEC POTS lines have migrated to other services. The customers have opted to migrate POTS to things like hosted VoIP, SIP services, uh, other type functionality, getting away from traditional POTS. LECs like AT&T, they sort of signaled uh, that they, they want to get out of the POTS business by uh, 2020. Others talked of migrating all, all, the, all their services to fiber and changing what a traditional POTS line would be. Then the FCC changed its rules on UNIs. They, they basically said that after a certain date and time, UNI Ls would no longer be available. Uh, and we're kind of going through that now, right? We're, we're, we're going through massive migrations as, as the old CLEX could no longer offer those services. And then the LEX introduced wholesale agreements, which NHC has been a part of since day one. These are commercial agreements away from the traditional FCC requirements. And these are the rates that, that NHC and some other companies uh, like us uh, offer coast to coast through the LEX. Um, you know, POTS voice use began to fade and it began to focus on really uh, facilities that were five lines or less, elevator lines, fax lines, alarm lines, uh, you know, and monitoring and control services. That became sort of the applications for POTS. If we look at kind of the fate of POTS lines today, and this is going to be an NHC sort of looking forward, this is, you know, uh, wetting our finger and sticking our finger in the air and seeing where the wind blows. Um, but basically what Verizon's done is they sold off all their LEC areas except for uh, the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic where they are, where they remain to be the LEC. They spent five years uh, covering, uh, basically converting all LEC services and all COs from copper to, uh, from copper and TDM to fiber. And they're doing that right now and I'm sure you probably had some customers that have been affected. We have moved thousands of lines uh, from uh, copper to fiber over the last few years under Verizon. Um, 
unfortunately, what this means is that new services can be, new construction can be problematic because they're only going to layer label, uh, put that fiber in where they really think they have an active business. They're not required to offer the POTS lines anymore. Uh, so that can be problematic. Uh, traditional TDM of any kind, including PRIs and, and other type services are really being phased out under Verizon. Uh, the prices are going up for the, for the fiber-based POTS, um, you know, not as dramatically as other carriers. And they really remain committed to offering POTS, even if it's going to be on a fiber basis. We have a multi-year agreement with them in place, and our suspicion is that they will probably renew that uh, uh, agreement. Then let's take a look at AT&T. Uh, first of all, they said they weren't going to offer POTS Plus 2020. Then they changed the direction, and now they have POTS agreements uh, with it. And it looks to us like they're going to offer POTS, at least for the near term, for the next few years. But they are forcing customers away from POTS service by imposing massive rate increases. And we've seen these to be, believe it or not, over $300 uh, in some of the rural areas of Texas for POTS service. So they're really trying to squeeze the customer away from that by having massive price increases. Frontier and Lumen, uh, they're following at and strategy. They are raising rates and basically trying to move the market away from POT service, but they are offering it. Consolidated, uh, very similar, but they, they have no plans for disconnecting their POT service. Windstream, uh, very different scenario there. The, the CLEC division, which uh, we, we have been working with since apart from all of its entities for many, many years, uh, they are disconnecting all TDM services. So that not only includes POTS lines, but it also includes PRI services. It includes basic T1s. Uh, all of that is kind of going away. They have a new division called Kinetic, which we are also uh, wholesaling with. And these are the folks that are just the LEC areas of, of Windstream. And they have no POTS service available on wholesale or resale today. And then lastly on this one, the, the, the CLEX. So <clears throat> two things have led to kind of the end of the CLEC offering POTS business. One is, as I discussed earlier, that uni loops have gone away. And the second one is the sale of these facilities-based carriers like TPX and Earthlink, for example, that are now bought by other organizations that are not interested in supplying POTS services. So that's kind of what's happening with the traditional uh, POTS business uh, across the country. And then lastly, let's talk about POTS use today. There are uh, more than 50 million of that baseline of POTS services of 80 million have migrated to other carriers and service providers. Uh, some of those to, to, we're very proud of to NHC. There are approximately 30 million uh, LEC POTS remaining. Uh, one uh, LEC recently told me that they're churning at about 17%. Um, look, this business may be a little less glamorous than some of the other things we talk about up stack. Certainly our wonderful overlay or managed services, there's a lot more there in terms of growth potential. Uh, but 30 million commercial lines is nothing to shake a stick at. This is a, a remains to be a great application uh, for, for partners and for NHC uh, to offer POTS-like services. Um, you know, we can meet your customers' POTS migrations issues. We can solve that, that gentleman that talked to me about 80 locations and what to do with his POTS lines. We can solve that now with an entire variety of POTS solutions. And those include our traditional, our voice or our VoIP services, our new voice family of, of hosted UCAS and SIP solutions. They're cheaper, uh, they're way more feature rich. There's all kinds of applications that we can do with VoIP that we couldn't do with traditional POTS. And now we have cable companies offering POTS services on a commercial basis. And the beauty of that is it's cheaper than LEC POTS and it has that battery backup uh, to cover the FLS requirements that a lot of you folks might be experiencing out there with your customers. And then the latest uh, uh, variety of POTS solutions uh, to offer to our partner community uh, is wireless POTS. And you can offer you know, multiple voice lines delivered on a, a battery powered device connected to either a 4G or 5G uh, wireless broadband connection. So this gives you a lot of the coverage that you would be looking for, uh, cheaper than, much cheaper than LEC POTS. And the wireless basis overcomes things like construction issues, uh, the battery backup covers your, your, your FLS applications. And then lastly, if the customer's happy with what they have and they don't mind taking an occasional hit on the price increase, uh, 
Lec pots work all day long, and NHC has a Lec pots agreement, uh, as we stated before, with every major provider across the country. So any one of those things can work, or in some cases, for a multi-location customer, you might be plugging in multiple applications. But pots is here to stay, and we have uh, we have now a great variety of pot solutions to meet your customers' needs. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to our VP of sales, Eric Cameron is gonna talk about NHC pot solutions in all of the applications that are related to those solutions and pricing. Eric? Thank you, Glenn. Hello, everyone. So I'm gonna cover our four different analog, analog line options. As Glenn alluded to, um, you know, traditional lec based pots lines is the big part of our business. Um, and it continues to be. Uh, NHC built their bones off of aggregation and LEC POTS lines have always been a part of that. Next would be the new voice analog business lines. Effectively, those are anything that we pump through our meta switches, um, you know, with the IADs and such to hand off the analog lines. Cable code lines is a newer product for us. Um, and uh, we just recently rolled that out. Uh, we have three of the major cable codes um, in contract and we're working on adding additional. And then the last is the wireless POTS lines, um, which we've rolled out and, and, and deployed uh, quite a few different uh, you know, scenarios, uh, but we're also um, supplementing that product uh, with some additional enhancements. I'll talk a little about that later as well. Uh, let's start off with the traditional LEC POTS lines and the pros. So one of the nice things about um, analog lines um, with all different phones companies is that you typically can do a billing assumption, right? So um, our team will grab hold of the customer service record. They'll work with you and your customer. They'll analyze it. For the most part, we can assume those over as is. So a simple billing change. Every once in a while, you'll find grandfathered features and things that, that don't allow for the record to be assumed. But you know we've got a bench of uh, folks that can work with you and your customer and the sales team to kind of review that advise on changes so that we can indeed migrate those services over. As Glenn mentioned, um, we have executed longer term contracts with all the phone companies and for the foreseeable future, um, we don't see anything changing there. Once again, rates may continue to increase, but at least your customers are safe and your commissions are protected. Um, and um, you know, obviously, you know, with you know, traditional pods being what they are, uh, they are they are compliant for all um, fire life safety and elevator. Uh, which is called NFPA Rule 72. Now let's talk about some of the cons, right? Obviously, you know, with selling LEC-based services, we are reliant on the LEX. And unfortunately, with you know FCC kind of, you know, playing on getting removed from the picture in, in August, um, really holding the LEX to 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 normal standards. You know, infrastructure is you know very very hard to maintain. Uh, when things are broken. It's not going to be a quick quick fix. You're going to continue to see lengthy service outages. You know, if you talk to anybody in our network operations center team, you know, I think they'd say a good part of their day is chasing around the the LEX and such, and, and dealing with with extended outages. Uh, same thing on on installation uh, of new of new lines. Um, you know, that original three, four, five day process. If we can even install a new line, you know, maybe three weeks. So you will continue, continue to see new challenges there. Um, also, as Glenn alluded to, rates continue to increase. Uh, last week or the week before, I was uh, working with one of our partners um, who had an e, uh, AT&T bill, and they were had tariff rates of close to $400 per line. Um, and those are going to continue to go up unless you know they look to recontract them or do something different. And then also, from a customer perspective, it's very hard to maintain and manage costs um, you know, with LEC-based pot signs because they vary amongst all the different LECs. And even every once in a while, you look at um, certain LECs, like in Maryland and Verizon, for example, they may have three or four different rates um, based upon where they're located within that state. So this is some NHC retail pricing. So this is the retail price. This is what NHC is charging to the customers. What we see from an average perspective in the AT&T LEC area is $65 per line. Verizon, roughly $37 per line. Uh, Lumen and Legacy Quest area is roughly 50. Uh, Lumen and Legacy Central Link uh, in the independent areas, uh, uh, estimate was about $68 on average. Uh, consolidated was roughly 33. And Frontier, uh, a lot of that was uh, what they purchased off from, from Verizon and Shuts, is uh, roughly $65 per line. So it's, again, it's a vast difference between the consolidated to you know, AT&T. Next, let's talk about new voice analog business lines. Once again, these are the lines that are going through New Horizons meta switches, uh, where NHC is responsible for porting those TNs um, to our 
um, cloud. So we'll start off with the pros. Uh, there, and I'll talk about the rates in, in the next slide, but super affordable rates um, and very aggressive usage plans. Uh, pricing is ubiquitous across the entire country, including Canada. Um, NHC dispatches its own techs, um, which we can typically coordinate in just a couple days time. Uh, we have a WAN link redundancy feature on the IAD level. Uh, essentially what that means is we have the ability to program into the IAD managed by New Horizon fail over to a secondary internet circuit. Keep in mind New Horizons, you know, would prefer to provide the primary, secondary, tertiary, but we don't have to. This is just an optional feature that customers can add. And then we give customers um, access to our portal and GUI so they can control and manage the phone numbers. So in the event that they need to reroute a phone number or change from one location to another, um, things like that, uh, we put the power in the hands of the customer. And once again, they can always call our 24 seven uh, network operations center for, for that kind of help. So let's talk about some of the cons. Unfortunately with this product, uh, it is not compliant for fire, life safety and elevators. Um, also, in order for this service to work, we need to make sure we have a, a reliable, stable internet source to uh, provide the IAD installation over. Um, the, these lines are really more uh, geared towards fax or for people that have phone systems or, or something like that. So the features are fairly limited because um, we're typically you know, reliant off of the customer's premise-based phone system for that. Um, and then due to the cost of the IADs and such, we do have a three line minimum per site. This is the New Horizon retail pricing example. It's gonna, these are rack rate pricing. We've got customers that you know, pay less, but uh, those are typically uh, negotiated rates. A metered business line that uh, is producing a 0 0.019 domestic, including Canada, is a 9.99, so you know, $10 per line. An unlimited business line, which is just domestic, is uh, $20 per line. Each location and sometimes even uh, multiple per location. For example, if you have a business that has, you know, multiple, you know, groups or multiple businesses operating on the same site, you may have multiple listings. So you would have multiple E911s at $3.50 per. And then you all, always have to pair with an IAD. Um, if you want the WAN link redundancy feature, it does require the 16 port IAD, but you don't have, you don't necessarily have to have 16 lines or more than eight. You could have a 16 port IAD with you know, the three line minimum, uh, but once again, you just have to pay for the 16 port. And the IADs come eight, 16, and 24. In the event that someone needs to go above the 24, you can stack IADs. So example, let's say you had 30 lines, you can procure a 24 port as well as an eight port IAD from NHC. And um, these are all monthly costs. Next, let's talk about the, the cable co pots lines um, and the pros. Uh, we'll talk about the rates on the next page, but you know the super affordable, um, fantastic rate plans. You know for the most part, I believe most of them are even unlimited uh, flat rate local. Uh, they are all compliant rule 72, um, so which is important for fire life safety. And also again, for the most part, the cable codes are providing us fairly feature rich lines for customers that potentially do need them. But the cons, so you are leveraging the cable co and as most people are aware, they're not available everywhere. You know, the good news is, is NHC kind of works through those pieces, um, you know, for the customers um, as we're placing the orders. And in, in the event that there is construction or unforeseen charges, you know, we do have means to potentially help finance that by, you know, spreading it out over the term of the contract and things like that. But unfortunately, you know, there is build outs a lot of times for the cable co's and it is not available everywhere. Um, and, you know, similar to LEC, but definitely not as drastic, pricing does vary based on the cable company. And I'm sure we'll continue to see that as we add additional cable companies, um, cable co-lines to our, to our portfolio. And then limited redundancy. What I mean by that is you see a lot of situations where somebody has cable co as the primary access for their voice, you know, be it, you know, SIP or new voice analog lines or UCAS. Um, and then they'll have some sort of a backup, which may be maybe the left based pots lines or something like that. You know, if they have cable co as the primary and cable co as the, you know, the, the, the um, analog lines, there is limited redundancy there. You know, good news is we do have other access to, to different uh, circuits and things for, you know, to, to fix that redundancy. So as of right now, NHC has contracted with uh, Comcast, Spectrum, and Cox. Um, retail rates for uh, both Comcast and Spectrum is uh, roughly $40 per line, and Cox retail rate is roughly $32. And this includes their modems and, and such. 
And lastly, let's talk about NHC's wireless pots. So we'll start with the pros. Ubiquitous pricing model again, so nationwide, uh, you deploy this solution in Boston, deploy this solution in LA, uh, the cost uh, is going to be the same. Redundancy is built into this appliance. Uh, that includes uh, the, L the backup LTE service, as well as the backup battery. Uh, typically the primary is going to be uh, either a hardwired circuit, or we could also Wi-Fi into the customer's LAN. And so we don't have to, NHC doesn't have to provide that primary circuit, uh, but we need to have a primary circuit, only way to maintain the uh, NFPA Rule 72 compliance. And then uh, same as uh, the New Horizon POTS lines, um, we do have NHC techs that go out and install this. We can utilize them for doing cross connects, uh, potential um, extensions, anything that uh, you or your customer may need. And so we can usually deploy the New Horizons techs within a couple of days notice. Some of the, uh, the cons are, you know, depending on where these boxes or appliances are installed, we need to make sure we have LTE signaling. If we don't have that LTE signaling, we are therefore not compliant. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to address, right? Because, you know, you may have LTE signaling staying in an office or outside, in, you know, outside, you know, in the parking lot. But if these are getting installed in basements or utility rooms or wherever it may be, the signaling is definitely different there. Uh, but for the most part, we've had pretty good success in making sure we've got enough signaling to, to install these. Uh, these are not really designed for, for voice. They can, but they're not really designed for that. So the features are fairly limited um, on this, on this uh, solution. And then, you know, you talked about like the Verizon market at $37. This solution, you know, at least as it stands now, is not super competitive for some of those, uh, you know, lower cost uh, lines solution, you know, from the Lex or obviously for the New Horizons um, analog lines. But certain markets, it's just not a, it's not a super competitive uh, like you may see versus, you know, an AT&T land. And then, you know, with supply chain issues, there's a lot of different components that make up this appliance. So sometimes we are seeing some delays in actually sourcing the box, you know, due to some of the components. So here is some um, two uh, examples. Um, we'll start off on the left that talks about the component pricing. So the initial lines are 1995. Each additional line after that per site or per box is $49.95. Um, you can buy one of two different boxes. One, one provides up to four lines, the other one provides up to eight. If a customer needs more than that, they just procure multiple boxes. Uh, and once again, it goes back to the, you know, 1995 and then each additional line is $49.95. Each appliance uh, does need to have the network fee and the monitoring fee at $29.95 each. So if we look on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, we did a two-line solution as well as, as well as a five-line solution. Two-line solution for $159.80, the average comes out to about $80 per line. The five-line solution totaling $314.60, you can see the difference, the average comes out to $63 per line. I mentioned uh, beginning when I was talking about this solution um, that we are um, supplementing the solution. So we will have an announcement very soon. We are adding on an additional um, appliance that we will see significantly better rates than here. But for now, we are having a lot of success in the, uh, with this box where, you know, we really don't have any other options. So this is uh, Glenn Book, Glenn and I's contact information. Um, if anybody has any questions before we start the Q&A, you know, please you know, jot down our information. Uh, also, I know the team at Becca at the end of this presentation, they will be sending out a note to everybody that joined all participants. That will include both Glenn and I's information. Appreciate everybody's time. All right, thank you very much for all that information. That's a, a lot of information to get through. So. Uh, we do have a few questions, so let's just jump right, jump right in since you've given us the information on how to get a hold of you. Uh, let's take this one. Uh, I'm in Arizona, so do you offer POT services here? I, I know you mentioned in the presentation that you're certified in all 50 states, but do you offer POT services here, and, and in what states can we find the service? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll take that one, Bruce. So we do offer uh, services in Arizona. Uh, we offer services in all in all uh, well, 49 states plus the District of Columbia. Uh, we don't have pots yet in Alaska. I'm happy to do so if we saw an agreement, but um, 
In fact, funny you should say Arizona, because Arizona is one of the hardest states, along with Tennessee, to actually get certified. It took us a couple of years, but we are absolutely a full service uh, telephone uh, utility in Arizona, and we offer everything from the Lex side to all the services that Eric and I have talked about, uh, all the POTS alternatives. Okay, great. We've had uh, two questions come in about whether or not uh, you will be making this um, presentation, the uh, slide deck available to attendees. Will you be sending that out to, to attendees? Yes. Okay, great. It'll also be posted on our, our website as well. Yep. And it will also be on our website because we put all of our webinars on, on our website. So uh, um, can you talk to us about how NHC supports enterprise customers in every state? Yeah, so um, you know, keep in mind our our brand, our, our products are really designed for customers that have a lot going on, right? So multi-site, multi-service, and a lot of the times those different industries end up being enterprise. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, we we sell a lot of small business too. Um, you know, we don't we don't say no to the single site, you know, be it multi-product or multi-service, but you know, we've really built our product around that entire, um, you know, multi-site customer. And as Glenn was talking about before, our competitive churn is less than a half of 1%. Um, and that strands across all different, you know, verticals and, and customer sizes. You know, to keep an enterprise customer, and we have, we have plenty of them for as long as we do, that means that we must be doing something, right? And that really comes to that, you know, the honeymoon phase after the sale is submitted with the, with the fantastic project management, the fantastic support model that we offer to our to our partners and our customers. You know, we think just like our partners, you have to have a little bit of a canvas to paint on. Um, we would not, against a, <clears throat> a three line single location pizza parlor, we're not going to be the best deal in town for that. That's not what we do and that's not really what our partners do. You know, we're looking for the larger single location or the multi-location customer. And then when you look at all the stack solutions we have and the great customer service, that's what we think our partners really appreciate. And we think also that's where the partners make, you know, the most amount of compensation of working with a customer of that size. Okay. Um, other than for traditional facts or for um, emergency services, why would a company want to maintain POTS? Well, it, yeah, so I'll grab that one. So I don't think it's the customer wants to maintain pots, right? I think it's more of they're, they're forced to, right? Because there are some applications, like you just mentioned there, um, and we still see modems, we still see, um, you know, uh, merchant services and things like that, where customers have not made that transition. So what's nice about the way we could do this, we can be super flexible on contracts. We can give them downturn clauses and things like that. So it allow for them to migrate to those types of um, alternative solutions as they seem fit. But, you know, pots are a big part of what we do. We do thousands of pots lines, sometimes even, even month of new pots lines that we didn't have before, just because customers have not quite gotten there yet. Yeah, if I could add too, if you look at a modern POTS line from Verizon where it's delivered on fiber, it overcomes a lot of the issues that we have with, uh, with Twisted Pair stuff, which is the infrastructure is shot, the service fails a lot due to all kinds of weather damage, et cetera. Um, you know, the equipment is old. When it's delivered brand new, it's really within the last couple of years, fiber right to the customer's location, that overcomes some stuff and it's still priced right. Um, so what we're kind of really offering to our partner community here is, look, if, if you want to sell traditional pots, because there's still plenty of those 30 million lines out there where customers are happy with what they've got. We want to we want to say, hey, flip those traditional services to NHC and you get everything else, all the services and everything you provide, because generally the LEC does not do that very well. OK, and then if you have other things that need to fit into other pockets of our pot solutions, we have that for you. And then the last thought on that, too, is something that we've found, and I'm sure that our partners have found, is that when you go, if you if nothing is, is broken and you go to the customer and you say, well, let me give you this for that, that could open up the gateway to them asking all kinds of other questions from other competitors. And suddenly 
uh, your nice stable revenue you were earning from your POTS lines has gone out the door because you've, you, you've missed the opportunity. So we generally say, you know, let that sleeping dog lie unless there's an issue or unless we have to migrate it as we are doing it right now because, for instance, the CLEX are getting out of that business. We have stories of customers, you know, cleaning up, you know, POTS lines at 50 locations and now they bill a half a million dollars a month with us um, with different types of services. So, you know, sometimes they get forgotten, but they can definitely be a great entry point into customers. And, you know, even the cleanup piece of it, too. You know, uh, I think if you get a good company and a good partner working together, looking at, you know, a larger company's, you know, POTS invoicing and such, you know, there's, there's a lot of cleanup potential there. It helps you build the trust, the relationship, and kind of set the hook. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you've uh, been speaking about partners for a while. So why don't we just Talk a little bit about how NHC works with, with your master partners. Yeah, so yeah, so come on, NHC is 100% uh, partner driven. Um, you know, we, we, we started with a lot of regional partner relationships, primarily in the Northeast, but over the last seven or so years, we've uh, executed contracts with basically every single, you know, master agent out there. Um, you know, I'm assuming that most folks are aligned with them now and they can definitely access New Horizons portfolio products, you know, through any of those, you know, top seven or so masters that, that exist. Okay. And as long as we're still on the uh, uh, partner situation, are you going to be at uh, next week's channel partners show? <coughs> and if so, uh, where can, where can we find you and send an, or send an appointment? Yeah, so uh, so both Glenn and I will be there, um, as well as uh, uh, some additional uh, NHC uh, sales folks. So reach out to Glenn or I. I believe we have a meeting set up link on our website as well. But you know, please reach out to Glenn or I, um, and we would be happy to set up some time to to meet with anybody. Absolutely. Okay. Um, is there a general type of customer or scenario that you can talk about as typical or common for each of the four POTS options? Yeah, I'll take a crack at that and you can add if you sure. like. Yeah. Okay, so as I, I think I said before, I think the best type of customer for NHC is a you know mid-sized to larger single location in which we can offer everything on our stack or uh, a multi-location environment. And if you were say across the country, if you looked at some of the things that Eric and I said in terms of rates, there is very few compelling reasons why, as to why a customer would want to spend, um, you know, a hundred dollars for a POTS line in AT and T, you know, or for that matter, not to shoot ourselves in the foot, sixty-five dollars is pretty expensive for a POTS line. So what we would want to do in some of those areas is to go to that customer and say, you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to have, you have all these POTS lines, maybe we can cut your rate by 30% by simply, you know, moving you to a new, to a, to a new one of our POTS solutions, whether it be cable, um, you know, or some, perhaps some wireless uh, solutions or backing up your mission critical solutions with wireless. So there's rather a lot there. And it, it really depends upon where you are. If you're in Verizon land, um, it could be that we can offer some better uh, rates by going with the cable codes, especially if some of those applications, as we said earlier, a lot of the customers now are not really using POTS lines for business voice. They're using these POTS lines for alarm lines, for fire, uh, for flow and control devices, uh, you know, all of those sort of uh, non-voice related POTS uses. And by, by converting those over to either cable or cable and wireless solutions, they'll get the redundancy and they'll get a lower price. So, and the other thing that I think I would say is if they're not, a, obviously if they're not a customer of NHC, but the partner wants to bring us in for those applications, it's a great way for the customer to get to know us and for us to expand up our solution stack uh, to, to higher level services that are far more sticky and strategic for the customer that will further help uh, the partner being tied to that customer. 
Yeah. Okay. And as you said, and what I would, I would add is, um, you know, keep in mind that the first key here is understanding what the pot sign application is for. Right. So then you, from there, you look at the pros and cons in the perfect world. If we can move all the pots required things to our meta switch, you know, everybody's happy, you know, commissions will be happy and the price wise customer will be happy. But once again, if you look at the pros and cons, you can't always do that. So the key is having a good relationship with the partner and understanding the applications for the lines. And then it comes down to putting them on the right service that fits the applications and what those options are. So the next piece would be from, you know, obviously doing it through our meta switches would be to do it on the cable coast. So we just kind of work our way through that. But the good news is between the four different, um, you know, options that we have, the growing options too, we're adding more cable companies, we're adding additional, um, uh, uh, wireless, wireless, right. um, uh, wireless options. You know, we will have a pot solution right. for that customer that has pot slots. Eric, you you kind of uh, welcomed the discussion of pros and cons. So uh, that opened up uh, a segue for this question: What are the cons or the downsides of fiber-based pots price? So what I would say, um, what I've seen, and what's and this is a newer product. What I've seen. Um, and whoever asks the question wants to reach out to me directly, I can you know get some more information. What I've seen from a con perspective is the pricing has been substantially higher than what we have seen in the past. And that's not necessarily across all LEX, but um, you know for the most part, you know if it's getting delivered over fiber, they're not necessarily giving uni discounts in things. So rates have been substantially substantially higher. Um, service works great. It's compliant across the board, but um, you know rates have not been super aggressive. If I could add to that too, there's there's a sort of regulatory component as well. Since <laughs> universal services, POTS is no longer really part of universal service. Uh, they don't have to provide the service. So in the case of Verizon, the, the rates are pretty competitive against, as you can see, some of the other uh, traditional LEC uh, offerings, but they're not compelled to provide the service to a new location. And so the limitation, the biggest limitation of, I think, fiber pots uh, is even if they're competitive on the price, they may not offer it. And that's a big deal. I mean, if it's an existing location, yeah, sure. But even customers that today are part of their traditional, uh, you know, LEC area, if the customer is really so far out, they can't offer, um, they're not gonna run fiber to them, we actually have to go and tell the customer that we've got to migrate you to something else because it can't even stay on 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 uh, on Verizon Pots anymore. So th it's a combination. It could be the pricing, but it also could be the availability of the service. And that's why you got to look at every. We're, we're, you know, we would like to run everything through the Pots Solutions bag of of, of possibilities uh, for our customers. Okay, great. Well, we've got uh, maybe three more questions here. Um, with cable company POTS, how does it compile with FLS since their networks still require power locally and across their networks? Uh, we have battery backup. So it meets the standards. Uh, I think it's eight hours uh, of, of maintaining battery backup. It meets, meets the the uh, FN72? Yeah, FN72. Yeah. F yeah, yeah. So, and for what it's worth, we do have compliancy letters yes. um, for uh, both of the wireless POTS devices as well as all the cable codes that we've contracted with. So uh, there are compliancy le letters that will satisfy, um, you know, typically what the marshals or anybody's asking for, inspections. And that's been a huge help to us, um, actually the whole, whole industry, because – for instance, as Verizon has converted to fiber, we no longer can get uh, loop start lines for elevators and those sorts of things. And so in order to have that, we've actually put cable in to replace the the, the migrating uh, POTS lines that were used with elevator and, and other lines like alarm that requires that battery backup. So it's been very good for the industry, but I will say this, that you know, uh, there's, there's, a, there's now millions of POTS lines uh, that the cable companies are are now managing, uh, you know, on our behalf. So it's kind of it's kind of a big deal. It's a big change in the business. Okay, so why don't we just talk a little bit about um, your relationship with the cable companies and cable pots? Um, yeah. So 
you know, keep in mind, um, you know, we've had, we built our bones off of being an aggregator and that involved working with the cable companies for the last 20 years. Um, so we've had a relationship with the cable companies for, for a long time. We've just never executed contracts on the pot signs because we were with, with all the LECs and trying to migrate things to, to our, you know, our internal meta switches. Uh, but uh, our operations team just over the last, what, three to six months, three or yeah. so months, uh, we've migrated thousands of lines um, um, successfully to the cable coast. Um, so, you know, due to some of the CLEX that we work with, um, you know, basically giving end of life notifications and, you know, just uh, some of the issues we've had with, uh, you know, some of the central offices being, being decommissioned and things. So we've had a fantastic experience thus far working with the cable companies. And we have behind that, we have close to 15 years of wholesale buying, buying with the cable companies for, uh, broadband and DIA services, of which we have really thousands and thousands of them installed uh, with because of the overlay products that we have in managed services in the direction of the industry, uh, you know, we're, we're putting in hundreds of these things a week. So we have outstanding relationships with all of the ops and sales organizations uh, within those cable uh, codes. And we offer uh, probably about 10 different cable codes but those three are the ones that we're providing today for, for business pots. And we are, we are expanding that. Yep. Okay, great. Now here's one, um, I'm not really sure how, how to phrase this, but, it, but it's talking about IP analog type services, you know, that sometimes have issues, uh, especially with radio and TV production of sports events. Uh, it's coming from, um, the question is coming from a university and IP, IP analog sometimes poses problems. How how do how does this work with uh, with uh, NHC? Yeah. So my understanding is for and we I, we have we have uh, several, but I have one large customer I'm thinking of. Um, you know, my understanding is that for those types of analog services. You know, they're really designed to not necessarily be even over a traditional POTS line. They're designed to go over like a BRI for their their specialty signaling. Um, but, you know, th th that's a tough one, right? Because historically speaking, you know, POTS lines have not been a good substitute for that. Um, and most of those products have been grandfathered. You know, you can't really order them anymore. At least, you know, at least we can't. Um, so a lot of the customers that, at least the one from my experience, has uh, transitioned to a completely different service, more IP driven. Um, and for them, it has worked. It wasn't a New horizon solution, but they had multiple BRIs from us connecting their studio in, in um, Connecticut back to Los Angeles to the home base. Um, we went from, I think, four BRIs to, to no BRIs. They would have one left for backup. Um, but they, they, they've moved it all to some sort of an IP device. Okay. All right. We got two more for you now. Um, the first one is, uh, do you support Massachusetts state government and aging agency pricing contracts? Yes, we do. So we're, we are one of the, uh, one of seven vendors uh, that has been awarded the, uh, so the seven is our exclusive con uh, contractors for the, $1.5 billion uh, ITT72 uh, contract for communication services uh, for the state and all of its state-related entities, as well as towns. So <clears throat> those prices are published uh, through ITT72, through, through the uh, services division of Massachusetts, um, and th th they can buy directly from them. Uh, they can contact us and look at our price sheet and buy uh, directly from us. So it really opens up a great opportunity for state entities, state organizations, uh, and cities and towns across the state. Okay. And our final question, and probably the most important one of all, why NHC versus competitive offers? So, you know, it, it, it depends, right? Because if you look at, you know, I'll mention any specific head of competitors, you look at different competitors, you know, a lot of times the, the answer is something different, right? Um, but, you know, it'll be a collective of, keep my mind, I said before, we're 100% partner driven, right? So there's no competition with, with direct sales force with New Horizon. Um, and that is a big, 
you know, big differentiator between us and probably our, our main competitor in, in, in this area is that it is 100% partner driven, no competition through that. And the other piece I would say is our, you know, the fact that we've in, own our own switches, right? So the fact that we own our own meta switches, we're not reselling somebody else's, you know, IP voice or UCAS or contact center. Um, it's coming through our, you know, owned and operated meta switches. Um, we're direct on our SD-WAN offering. You know, we're not going through an intermediary, you know, for SD-WAN and for security. We work directly with Checkpoint. We work directly with, with um, VeloCloud. And a lot of our competition can't say that. And um, I can tell you there's not much of our competition that can say all of those things. Um, and that's typically what our, what our differentiator is. It's very, very rare that a partner gives NHC an opportunity um, that we close, that we don't get another one. Um, and then, you know, if you look at our compensation versus a lot of our competitors, you know, we are one of the highest, you know, you know, comping organizations. Um, and the reason we can do that um, is because we know we're going to keep our customers together for a very, very long time. You know, our return um, on a, you know, from a bonus and commission perspective, you know, our return is, you know, well over two years for a lot of deals that we sell, just because we know we have that longevity there. It's really that combination of what Eric said, what we said earlier in our presentation about NHC, but it's, it's that we do obsess about the customer and partner experience and that and represented in that experience are all the tangible things we talked about in terms of the service models we use, all the great stack solutions, how Eric and Eric's team manage the partner relationship. But then it's a, a lot of intangibles that make that experience really very, very pleasant and rewarding for the, for the partner and gives the customer that kind of consistency that they're looking for, uh, for their communications planning in the long run. Okay, great. I think that's going to wrap up today's webinar. Our thanks to NHC's co-founder and vice president of marketing and business development, Glenn Nelson, and vice president of sales, Eric Hammer. Thank you very, both very much. And now from all of us at Channel Vision Magazine and from our friends at NHC, thank you for attending. Have a safe and prosperous day. Thank you, everyone.